Okay, I guess we can begin. Uh, first, off, first of all, I'd like to welcome everyone here. This is the second meeting of the Mono Entrepreneur Society for this year. Our guest speaker certainly exemplifies the entrepreneurial spirit. A leader in the communications field, Mr. Sterling has certainly shown that Canada and Newfoundland in particular can provide a wealth of opportunities for the budding entrepreneur. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my sincere pleasure and privilege to present Mr. Jeff Sterling. Well, I appreciate being uh, invited. I'd like to tell someone in the room who we promised a job for three weeks that the, it's been delayed, but it'll start in a couple of weeks. We're running behind schedule. It's difficult not to. I didn't so much as want to make a speech as much as answer questions. Uh, when you think that if of the 244,000 Newfoundland entrepreneurial people who could exist, who are the total workforce of Newfoundland, we just discussed it, 244,000. Well, two men who started Amway hired 250,000. In other words, just two men who decided to be entrepreneurial and started a credible product for cleaning up just basic things. It's, it's headquartered in Michigan, and the two of them hired 250,000 people. If 50% of our 244,000, for example, could create two jobs, you got full employment. If 20%, you cut it down and you say at a certain percentage, if only 25% of us can create five jobs, we got full employment. If you can get 30,000 bed and breakfasts, which would give 60,000 jobs for the man and his wife and the son, and all of the various elements that we maximize our potential in this incredibly large province. You know that Quebec is three times the size of France. Ontario is five times the size of California. California has more population than the total population of Canada. And they have two Senate seats. And <coughs> Wyoming, with smaller population than Newfoundland, have two Senate seats, which is the fundamental principle of the free enterprise system, and that's democracy and equality. If you don't have that, you have nothing. And the key thing is my opinion to say to yourself as 38 individuals sitting in the room. How many, by the way, were born in Newfoundland? How many were born um, in Quebec? How many were born in Ontario? How many were born in British Columbia? How many in Calgary? How many in the United States? So once again, how many in Newfoundland? Do you mind? Because it's important for my in fantastic. Well, I, I've always felt sorry for people who weren't born as Newfoundlanders. I don't know why. I guess it was because so many of my, my friends, I went to high school in England, and I went to college in the United States, and I went to grammar school in Newfoundland. And the more I traveled, and the more I saw people and individuals, seeing them all the same, the more I realized that all we need is input. All we need is confidence. The biggest and most difficult thing in Newfoundland is our confidence. We've, we've been told we live on an island. Well, Bell Island's an island. If you told someone in Japan they lived on an island, they'd laugh at you. But Japan is no bigger than Newfoundland. They've got 136 million people. Or, do you know, anybody ever think how big you are compared to Israel? You're 900 times bigger than Israel. You're three times Prince Edward Island, New Brunswick, and Nova Scotia. You're bigger than Arizona. You're bigger than every state in the Union except Alaska and Texas. And you're almost as big as Texas. But we've been told you live on a rock. Can you see all of us standing on one big rock? That's the biggest thing, I think, in deciding what you want to be is entrepreneurial. You've got to do something you love. You really want to do it. It's not hard to be successful when you find something you really, truly want to do. And you become introspective enough and analytical enough to really and truly ask yourself. And it's, it's very difficult between 16 and 22 or 23 or 24 
to focus on what you really get off on. It's, it's, we, we've never asked ourselves, we've said go out and look for a job. Well, that's ludicrous. Go out and look for a job doing what? Something you don't like and get trapped <clears throat> with a big low on the floor and two or three Chesterfields and they trap you for the rest of your life like they do in New York with a two or three hundred thousand dollar salary in a, in a polluted town where you take four hours of pollution to get home and you call yourself a vice president and you clap yourself in the back. It's all relative. Your lifestyle is the most important thing in your life. Your life, what are you going to have, do with the next 20 years of your life? Most people never project. Entrepreneurial is the one area where you've got to be willing to take responsibility. You've got to be willing to say, when I did, I came back and I thought, what can I do? I have no capital. My dad isn't very wealthy. What can I do when I came back from college? And I thought, well, if I can get a printer to give me and I had a thousand dollars to print something that's going to sell, then I can break through. So I wrote every word in the Newfoundland Herald from cover to cover, with the exception of four columns. I was 22, and the creative uh, trade printers gave me credit for three issues, and we were sold out. And I was out of it, because I had no intention of working for anybody. I'd rather go down in South America and pick up coconuts, or get beach rocks and put Gilbrand's sayings on the beach rocks and make them to lay on paperweights or do what they've done up in Cowhead and other places where they've got, where they've got lobster shells. Some guy has made more money from the lobster shells developing little characters. I'm sorry I didn't bring one along here. Have anybody seen these? Has anybody in the room seen these little characters made out of lobster shells with a muscle for a Southwester? <laughs> and they sell for fourteen seventy five. Twice as much as the lobster did. <laughs> it's the same with scallop shells. If you go to Ch uh, Japan, the first thing that struck me in Japan the second or third time and they trusted me enough to show me some of the stuff was the incredible things they were doing with scallop shells. And we're up to our ears in scallop shells because they've thrown them away and they took the scallop out. Out in Marystown I saw up underwater a pile of scallop shells about four feet high. Well, it's all jewelry potential. If we could see the invisibles in Newfoundland, right now we're all doing this because we can't get cod. We got in cod for 500 years until they came in and, and did everything else with technology and wiped this out to get the last fish in the ocean, as they say. Well, we haven't spent the 500 years going after scallops. We haven't spent the fi last 500 years going after escargot. We haven't last, which is snails, <coughs> We haven't last the, the loss, gone after seaweed. In, in, in Japan, one of the supermarkets, the entire two things was different kinds of seaweed bottled and shredded. And it was very expensive because it's so nutritious. When you think the average person eats three to five pounds a day of food, and those of you who are mathematically intent can give it 365 multiplied by five real fast and know that that's a ton, right? That you're passing through your body wearing out your body <laughs> every five years passing through five tons well that's not a person that's a tapeworm right <laughs> well the last addiction is food nobody wants to hear about it last person wants to hear about it is is your mother <laughs> you're not eating today my oh, god <laughs> don't freak her out just get it out quietly into a handkerchief and give it to the dog. <laughs> the amount of body fluid you need is at least 10 glasses of clear water a day. Everybody who's in the scientist class is well aware that 90% of their brain, which is a 58 ounce organism, that 90% of it is hydrogen and oxygen. Now, as we try to conceive the inconceivable, it's very difficult. It's very difficult to conceive the inconceivable. You've got to have a brain cell prepared for it. If I do a heavy rap on UFOs, I can watch the faces and the, and the body language. And if you haven't a brain cell prepared, even to consider it, the minute you crystallize your brain cells into, re into accepting the past, they're no longer little children coming into the potential kingdom where they can be taught new material, new observation, avant-garde, neophobia, 
which the French is avant-garde, but neophobia is fear of change. Try it if you're still living with your mother. Move the furniture around in her favorite room. <laughs> and wait and see what happens in the morning. I don't want particularly to make a, a rap, because when you've got 38 Newfoundlanders, or 27 Newfoundlanders and 10 mainlanders, come from away, uh, I'd rather answer questions if you've got any questions. Specific questions. You know, I mean, I'll go on for as long as you want. I'll talk about any subject you want me to talk about. Those I don't know anything about, I'll turn over to someone who does. <laughs> but is there any questions? I mean, is there any specific direction you want my, my talk to go on how to make money? How to get out of the trap you're in? Or not necessarily in. How to uh, make it yourself? It's good to bring a group together. I, I always try to go for four women and three men to give the balance, the, the electricity in the room. You've got four women and three men, and the women can do it the other way around if they want to, but it's a totally chemistry balance to put an organism together that can, can, can cover all the bases. One, one, one is the front person who enjoys being in front of the camera. One is the director. One is the producer. One is the script writer. Okay. One is the casting director. I don't know if any of you got these things we're trying to do to stimulate creativity during the summer months, and we have a $10,000 contest. Has anybody got a form? Has any, anybody sent for a form? One. Okay. Well, that's not bad. If we get two out of 100. Because making, and we offered to lend a camera that you could put together your project and then make it work. And there's a tremendous amount of projects available now with small loans and grants. I mean, for example, if you're doing uh, video, video weddings, or you, you make a deal with a video store, and you can make uh, spaghetti or pizza, you order a video and pizza together. That's why the maximization of all the invisibles is so important. I tried to get a guy, I offered to do it free, through the night for two weeks. Who had, a, who had a, to tie together a taxi, deliver the pizza and the video. He wasn't interested. You know, you can only waste your energy so long to drag them screaming into the 22nd century. There comes a moment when you say, my God, like Pontius Pilate, right? Because it's very hard to get through the people who don't want to take responsibility. The biggest problem I have in Newfoundland isn't starting new businesses, isn't creating new jobs is finding people willing to say, yes, sir, I'll do it, and I'll do it better than you told me, and I'll make it work. And all I'm asking you to do is give me $10,000 worth of free advertising to stimulate the water in the pump. And I said, we'll give you credit for a year, and then we'll either write you off as a, a deadbeat, or we'll eventually get our money. But we'll give you the amount of money to prime, the, the amount of advertising to prime the pump. Anything you start, if it's a good product or a good service, and we give you an advance of 12 months of advertising as a young entrepreneur coming out of MUN into entrepreneurial thing. Not only will we give you that, but we'll sit around and wrap out all the angles to make sure it works. Because it's the only thing it takes is your confidence and a little support system. So you're not all by yourself. It's not, it's not very much fun all by your lonesome, no matter how successful you are. It's fun to have some other people around with you. As we discussed in Cowhead, a a, there's no reason why the craft shops, surely God, have got to close in September. Surely we can keep a craft shop open and build a craft shop in our studio. And any Newfoundlander who wants to send in crafts, once a week we'll sell them. Any artist who wants to send us a 35 millimeter photograph of his painting with how much he wants for it, we can sell it. I mean, we can do a, if you're really ambitious and we want to go global, we can get a, a second transponder and reach 400 billion people. Surely, God, we can sell something for us to throw away, mail Kaplan by the tons. I mean, it blows my mind. 